It's the SNL Hall of Fame podcast with your host, Jamie Dew. Chief Librarian, Thomas Senna. And featuring Matt Ardill. And now, Curator of the Hall, Jamie Dew. All right. Thank you so much, Doug Nance. It is great to be here with you all inside of the SNL Hall of Fame. It's nice and warm in here, and it's cold outside. So come on in and uh, warm your bones by the uh, unfrozen caveman lawyer exhibit. But before you do, make sure to wipe those feet. The SNL Hall of Fame podcast is a weekly affair where each episode we take a deep dive into the career of a former cast member, host, musical guest, or writer, and we add them to the ballot for your consideration. Once the nominees have been announced, we turn to you, the listener, to vote for the most deserving and help determine who will be enshrined for perpetuity inside the hall. Oh my gosh, that's how we play the game here in the SNL Hall of Fame. So how are you doing? I hope you're well. Uh, We are winding up season four in a spectacular fashion. This week we are talking about host Jim Carrey. We're joined by friend of the show, Jamie Burwood. At this point, uh, I believe a five-timer. Um... I, I may be wrong. Uh, I don't know if Thomas will bring it up in the conversation, but uh, that's what uh, that's what I'm thinking. Five times, Jamie Burwood. So I'm excited. We got Jim Carrey this week, and then we're going to wrap things up next week with Jason Sudeikis. So that should be a lot of fun. Speaking of a lot of fun, as I walk down the corridor to uh, the intersection of these two walls, where they form a corner, and we call that Matt's Minutia Minute Corner. Matt, you seem excited and agitated today. <laughs> what, What is going on, my friend? This is an interesting character that we're doing today. I am looking forward to discussing Jim Carrey. Height six foot two, born January 17th, 1962. Uh, favorite of my little brother. Uh, would regularly repeat Ace Ventura lines and mask lines as a kid. Drove me nuts. Um, Jim was born in Newmarket, Ontario. Good Canadian boy. Uh, his mom was a homemaker. His father was a musician and accountant. He grew up in Scarborough and Burlington. Yeah, he started doing impressions at a very young age. Uh, my, you know, again, influenced my little brother who started doing impressions at a very young age. Um, he would make faces, Jim, not my brother, uh, would make faces in the mirror at age eight uh, and was uh, a huge fan of both Monty Python and Carol Burnett. At the age of 10, he actually was, and this kind of speaks to the guts that Jim had at 10, he wrote to Carol Burnett, letting her know that he was a master of impressions and that he should be on her show. Uh, He was more than content when he received a form letter in response, um, which is, you know, pretty cool. He has 65 acting credits, 10 writer credits and six producer credits. I mean, now he spends a lot of his time painting. Um, He's an interesting duck. Now, he got his start at a young age. Um, He was uh, only 15 Uh, when he performed for the first time at Yuck Yucks. Uh, This was early on in Yuck Yucks history. It was actually in the basement of a community center on Church Street at the time. Um, Mark Breslin actually remembers his performance, calling him a bad, rich little. Um, which is, you know, a bad rich little is still better than like 99% of good impersonators. So that's still kind of praise. Uh, he, he, um, 
like I said, he was 15. He dropped out of high school at 16 to, perf to pursue performance. And uh, he continued to work as a security guard at a factory across the street from his family home. Um, up until that time, he'd actually been an A, straight A student. So, I mean, he's smart, um, but school, doesn't feel school is for him. Now, now, stay in school, kids. Not recommending you follow his path. Um, but yeah, interesting. He worked the circuit of Toronto clubs, developing a huge following before moving to Hollywood to star in the sitcom, a short-lived sitcom, sadly, The Duck Factory. Appearing on The Tonight Show at 21, he got the OK sign from Johnny, but was not waved over to the couch. He did not make that leap. Um, he sprung to public consciousness with his hiring on to In Living Color. Um, he has an interesting Hollywood history. Uh, his first starring film role was the comedy Once Bitten, uh, a vampire comedy. Um, but he's being considered for a lot of things. It's, it's interesting. I'd almost like to hear the history of why he didn't take or get these roles. But I mean, he was considered as for Dr. Evil. In Austin Powers, uh, he was almost the lead of Meet the Parents. Uh, he was up for both, both uh, uh, the first choice for both of Johnny Depp's roles in Pirates of the Caribbean and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And he was almost Buzz Lightyear. He has the most MTV awards of any one person, nine. He's been nominated for five Golden Globes, won two for The Truman Show and The Man on the Moon. And uh, one of people's 50 most beautiful people in the world in 1997, which I remember him in 1997. I don't like I will credit him for his impersonations. I will credit him for his talent as a comedian, even if it's not always for me. But one of the world's 50 most beautiful people. Eye of the Beholder. Um he appeared on the final episode of Late Show with David Letterman wearing a handmade shirt stating, Spank you kindly, David Letterman. He is the fifth highest grossing star in the top 10 box office stars of 1990. So yeah, that is uh, the trivia that I have for good old Canadian boy Jim Carrey. Yes, Matt, JD, thank you so much for uh, that intro, educating all of us about Jim Carrey, who is our topic today. He's being nominated as a host. We'll see if he gets into the SNL Hall of Fame. I actually drafted Jim Carrey in our season four draft because, yeah, he just he just meant so much to me growing up. He has an iconic SNL episode, so a lot of reasons why. I'm excited to talk about Jim Carrey. One of those reasons is my guest joining me to talk all things Jim Carrey and SNL, Jamie Burwood. How are you doing, Jamie? I am doing great. Yes, it's been a long day, so I'm super excited to be here to talk about Jim Carrey. I feel like it's the perfect way to to end the evening. And yeah, super, super excited to be back. Yes, it's going to be a good one. You are our guest for Christopher Walken, Will Ferrell, and Molly Shannon, two SNL Hall of Famers, and one in Molly Shannon that should be. I think you have a good track record with this stuff, Jamie. Yeah, it's, I can't believe it's been three. Wow, that's that's wild. But yeah, still super passionate about all of those three. So yeah, I feel like there's a lot of cool connections and synergies with the per person we're going to be talking about today. So it should be fun. Yeah, definitely. One of the connections is a similar era. You're kind of our one of our go to people for like late nineties, kind of kind of in that realm. So so uh, maybe maybe next season we'll find something different for you, for you or not. This is that yeah, seems to be I, right up your alley. <laughs> I do love this era. So no complaints if this becomes the era that I am associated with. I will gladly take that association. 
I will note that for sure. And uh, again, our nominee today, Jim Carrey, was in an interesting position heading into his first hosting stint at SNL. He was arguably the most popular cast member in another sketch comedy show in Living Color in the early 90s. Of course, he was a huge movie star. Starting around the mid-90s, he was just everywhere. Like Jim Carrey was the movie star, just a laundry list of things that he did heading into SNL. So, Jamie, I wanted to ask... When do you remember first watching Jim Carrey? Yeah, so this is a little bit of a wild, I think I'm a little bit of an anomaly on this, right? So when Jim Carrey's movies were first big, I was not quite old enough to really be able to see them. So I feel like I was kind of in that borderline cutoff range. So I remember him being a huge part of pop culture, of course, like growing up, especially into like teenage high school years. Honestly, more so from things like all of his interview appearances, Mm. things like SNL, um, I really didn't see that many of his classic movies until probably college slash early adulthood, which is wild because I feel like I talked to all my other friends in kind of my my same generation and I think they maybe found a way to get into his his movies a little yeah. bit. At a younger you weren't age like than sneaking into the movie theater yeah, or anything. Sadly, not. Um, <laughs> but over to honestly, I think the first Jim Carrey movie that I saw start to finish, and probably the only one that like this is the case for, was Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yeah. Uh, so like that's that was my probably first film introduction, and such a like interesting like departure in some ways for him. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love first... that one. Oh, no, that's one of my all-time favorite movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not, not quite a comedy, not a yep. little out of Jim Carrey's realm, but that's like one of my all-time favorite oh, movies. Oh, yeah, so he's, that's a he's great absolutely intro. brilliant, brilliant in that one. So, yeah, a little bit of a non-traditional introduction, but have kind of gone back and caught up on some of the, the classics as an adult. Yeah, so in the mid-90s, like, he had quite the run, like, between 94 and 95, even heading into his first SNL Uh, appearance in may of 96 he had ace ventura the mask dumb and dumber batman forever he played the riddler he was in ace ventura when nature calls he was promoting the cable guy when he was on snl but he just had this string of like hit after hit he was the star the comedy star in hollywood before that as i had mentioned he was on a sketch show. He was arguably the star of a popular sketch show in Living Color. Uh, Jamie, did you have you had a chance since in Living Color went off the air? I know you're huge, huge into TV. Yeah. Uh, have you had a chance to go back and watch any in Living Color? A little bit of the clip. So I feel like this is an era. I want to spend more time with it. I'm curious, yeah. like if you if you've seen if you have any like recommendations or just like overall perceptions because it's an area where I've heard such good things and like really want to spend some more time going back. I've caught a few clips here and there. I've seen um, little bits and pieces of Jim Carrey, but I I do feel like I I need to spend a bit more time going back to it because everything I've heard has been like super, super positive. It's good. Uh, Just like any piece of art or whatever any tv show from the early 90s i can't promise you how it'll age (laughs) with with a lot of the stuff but i remember i loved it and jim carrey was actually the one who really stood out i mean there was a great cast like damon wayans jamie Mm -hmm. fox tommy davidson i think most of the wayans siblings there must have been like three at least three of them on the show at one time they were so good but jim carrey was really like a standout he was almost made for sketch comedy and that's probably you know something we'll see talking about this uh in this episode jamie yeah i know it's it's so true right like i feel like there are certain performers you watch and you're just like you were born to do this like we talked about it a little bit with i think will ferrell like there are just some people where you feel like that sketch comedy talent is in their dna and i feel like for jim carrey it absolutely is oh definitely he just really pops off the screen and in living color if you look at any go back and watch any of those videos he's yep. just like a tornado yep. <laughs> on, on screen for sure he was like that in the movies and in living color so that that's like those are all huge reasons him being a movie star him having been on in living color why honestly jamie like i can't remember more anticipation for a host than leading up to jim carrey's first stint on snl And it was truly appointment television, even for non-SNL fans. And I don't know if you were able to catch this in real time or not, but I can't stress enough, like, the anticipation 
leading up to this episode. Yeah, and I I sadly did not watch it live. I would love to take a, a time machine back and, yeah. and be able to. I think it was one of the ones I probably first caught, like Comedy Central or, or whatnot, so a little bit after the fact. But yeah, I mean, I think just like thinking back to the history of this episode, I think you're so right that like that anticipation of like, okay, SNL can now get a big, maybe arguably the biggest at the time movie star. I mean, he was making headlines with like salary and whatnot. I, I think he was like one of the first, if not the first to like cross over to like make $20 million for the cable guy coming up. So like making headlines for all of the the really exciting reasons. And I just feel like that, that anticipation, like I, I absolutely believe it. I wish I could have been there for the like live, live oh, moment of it yeah. happening, but the history is, is certainly there. It was amazing. I, I, there was truly an electricity in the air that night. I remember I was 14 at the time. And I remember that night, my, fr my parents had some of their friends over and their friends brought, uh, their kids who maybe were a year about my age or maybe a little younger. And I remember we were so excited. We were like, we got to watch SNL tonight. Jim Carrey's hosting. So I remember actually putting it on in the middle of this little get together that my parents were having with yep. their friends. And we were just glued me and the other kids were like glued, glued to the TV. So and to cool. me, Jamie, this is like, this is what separates SNL to me from other sketch shows. Is this live electricity? I yeah. mean, I love other sketch shows like Chappelle. I used to love Chappelle Show, Key and Peele, but the live element and the electricity yeah. that was in the air at the time, Jamie, that's what separates SNL to me from other sketch shows that maybe unfairly SNL gets compared to in some ways. Yep, for sure. Yeah, I feel like there there is something about that excitement, right? Of like moments in TV. Like I just. I love that aspect of history, right? Of those moments where everyone's talking about something before the next morning, everyone's like, did you watch this person on the show? Mm -hmm. Did you see this sketch? Did you see this moment? And like, you're wanting to be part of that collective history. I just think that's one of the coolest things about, about television in general. Yeah. And that's what Lorne was, is, is going for. He's not just going for a good sketch show. He wants a live event. Mm -hmm. Lauren wants an event on late night television on Saturday night. He's not just going for something that like that you can flip on. Uh, I think you should leave or something like that. Love great sketch shows, but this is just so different. And there's, to me, there's no better example uh, than this first uh, Jim Carrey episode. I was trying to think, maybe you could help me. I was trying to think of somebody comparable now, or maybe in recent past who's, who's ended up hosting SNL. Like, can you think of somebody who's been, just like really, really anticipated to yeah, hope like they like, gotta host they, SNL. Right. Like, I I can't think of anyone from the past year. There's got to be examples, right? Like I'm sure like there's Betty somebody White. from the past five. Yeah, yeah, it's close. Yeah, I'm trying to think of that like a lister kind mm -hmm. of analogy, right? Though of someone who you're like, this is like one of the like five biggest celebrities in Hollywood in this moment. Um. Like Taylor Swift's already hosted and been yeah. on numerous times. Yeah. I feel like if she hosted in this moment now, like yeah. without the past history, like that would be like yeah. a moment with everything going on with her. But I feel like where she's had that history already, which is maybe why this is such a, a cool and just landmark kind of episode, right? Like I'm sure there are, yeah. I, I mean, I know there are lots of examples of A-list celebrities where it's like, okay, this this is a big deal. But I think like, the the combination of like the water cooler talk that was starting to happen with the cast and then combining that with what was happening with Jim Carrey, I feel like produced such a special moment in the show's history. Right, right. It would have to be an A-list celebrity who also had success on a sketch comedy show. Right, right. <laughs> before, it's all right? That's just yep. <laughs> Yeah, like the stars totally align with this one. Uh so his first episode, we'll get into it. It was season 21. It was the season finale of season 21 it was may 18th 1996 jim carrey was promoting the cable guy and we're gonna do a little something different a lot of times we'll kind of pick and choose sketches that we like from an episode and kind of talk about it. i think this one deserves almost a full yep. kind of <laughs> rundown to me it's such an iconic episode jamie i think it kind of deserves like a, a each sketch maybe deserves a little bit of attention mm -hmm. in this one for sure yeah this is 
honestly one of the and I feel like I'm pretty picky about this but this is one of the few episodes where there's not a bad sketch I know people love to say that it's a little bit of a cliche but I I just really think this is honestly one of the most solid episodes start to finish across the show's history and maybe that's a bold statement but there's just so so many gems in here which I'm sure we'll get into Oh, yeah, for sure. There's a ton of gems, a uh, good monologue. So we start like with the monologue, Jim Carrey coming out in character. It's like an alien version yep. of Jim Carrey. <laughs> Some of your ways I do not understand. Like the phrase, over the top. <laughs> I do not understand this. Where I come from, facial contortions are considered the ultimate in artistic achievement. <laughs> And talking out of one's butt crack <laughs> is a sign of personal confidence. <laughs> that was pretty fun. Pokes fun at the criticism of his over-the-top acting. It, he can kind of make fun of himself there, Jamie. Yeah, yeah I, like, I like this as a monologue because it kind of it got us right into the Jim Carrey of the Jim Carrey from the start, right? So that you don't feel like, okay, when is he going to bring into bring in his one-liners, bring in his true persona. Like, it is giving that to us right from the start. It's putting the energy level at the top of the top. Mentions the movie he's there for, which makes sense in the context of um, of just that moment in time. It just kind of hits on all the right notes for me, um, sets the right tone. So, yeah, I thought it was a really solid... It's nothing that's, like, weird and wild and, and crazy mm-hmm. in this one, but it's just... It's a solid great monologue that that fits the episode yeah and you could already tell the crowd was like hyped up as soon Mm -hmm. as he as soon as he came out just hyped up and and, and by the way jamie so he ended the monologue by doing a brief fire marshal bill i don't know if you know that who that is that's one of jib's characters from in living color okay no i did not know that in that case (laughs) let me show you something Soundgarden is here tonight. Ladies. So he ended and he did a little, like, I can't even do Fire Marshal Bill, <laughs> but the, the character that he ended with in the monologue, that was a famous oh, character of his from In Living gosh. Color. Okay. See, I love this. I would not have picked up on that. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, it was fun for viewers. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. he did Fire Marshal Bill on SNL. Like, worlds are colliding. Like, yep. this is great. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. I yeah. Love the little Easter egg. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then the first sketch of the night was also like a worlds collide kind of situation for sketch comedy fans and for SNL fans. So Jim was it's it was, it was so fun that night to see him in a recurring SNL sketch. So the first one he was in was the the cheerleaders. So what okay. what do you think of Jim's uh in this installment of the cheerleaders with Jim in it? I love that they started out with this, right? Cuz this is just like Again, setting the tone for what we're going to get for this whole episode of, like, it's going to be this fun mishmash of, like, amazing characters that the cast had created and owned and then putting Jim Carrey into the madness. And I feel like some hosts you put into the madness and you're like, okay, it's fine. The sketch, like, works because it's still a fun character recurring sketch. But I feel like with Jim Carrey and really across the, the whole episode, he just elevates it and fits so well into that zany tone so like there's a moment where he starts just like break dancing and it's just it becomes more funny and ridiculous the more Jim Carrey we get which is crazy to think that one of these sketches like one of those trailer sketches could actually even be taken up a notch and he somehow manages to do that so I I thought this was the perfect like high energy way to like kick kick the show right off he matched energy with two sketch comedy legends. Maybe at the time they weren't, they were still trying to grow into it, but Sherry O'Terry and Will Ferrell to see Jim Carrey and Will Ferrell play with each other yeah. throughout the night, which they did yep. throughout the night. That was so special to see Jim Carrey and Will Ferrell on screen with each other, matching each other's energy and doing that. I loved it. I like the turn that it took as a parody mm-hmm. of an after school special yes. as well. A little different for the cheerleaders. I was fooling around with the bad crowd when hanging on the video arcade. 
when they learn me that these pills will be the shortcut to the super spirit. I have let you down now. Mo. Lock meal. Super spirit doesn't come from a pharmacy. It comes from within. <laughs> the only prescription you need is a perfect cheer. Yeah, no, this this was super, super <laughs> fun. Like, honestly, probably one of my favorite Spartan Trailer sketches. Just it, yeah. he, he works with it so well. The next sketch is probably my favorite installment of a recurring sketch. And yeah. I remember this being the highlight of the night for many people. It was the Roxbury guys. Yeah, Loved so this yep. was, yeah, with Chris Kattan and Will Ferrell's Roxbury guys and Jim Carrey added into the madness. Like, this just fit to me. This yeah. fit the vibe of the night and Jim as a sketch performer. Agreed. I think this is really where it's like, okay, like, we are taking off for this to be such an awesome, iconic episode, right? To have those two sketches back to back. Again, classic characters. We have kind of up and coming cast members who are starting to establish themselves and create this fun universe to to play around in and i feel like we kind of get this like he's one of the gang tone right away and i think this is another sketch where you're just he he fits into it so perfectly like mm-hmm. i i thought it was yeah a really a really strong highlight of the night as well that's such a good point because he he came in and he wasn't trying to be bigger than snl so that's you're right. That's why it was important that he started with with two recurring sketches, established mm-hmm. SNL characters. He didn't want to be bigger than SNL. He could, easily could have been. Yep. But that yeah, that was just, that's just such a good point. Honestly, Jamie, I didn't always love these Roxbury sketches. To me, they were just kind of okay. But Jim just added real life to yeah. this one. Ah oh, man, and these beats are so memorable. Like yep. the escalation. <laughs> is perfect going from the club they always like get kicked out of the club high school prom the the wedding with nancy walls and uh, jim brewer and then they end the night at the retirement home that's like the chef's kiss cherry on top of of this sketch with them at the retirement home yes oh my gosh such yeah such a good kind of flow throughout um yeah no this is awesome and then we have uh one that's not recurring which which i got a kick out of a jacuzzi lifeguard Jamie, what do you think about that premise? This is probably my favorite of the episode. I I absolutely love this one. Like, this is top tier for me. And I don't know if I'm alone in this or if other people really enjoy this one too, but No, I think this was popular. Okay. I was gonna say, I I just I think this is really right up there for me. So first of all, the role I think works really perfect for Jim to be over the top. And you have Will in kind of a a little bit of a different role than he usually is. It's a little more subdued, but he can still have his funny moments throughout. So I thought this was a nice way to like let Jim take on this really crazy role. So he's this overeager lifeguard of literally just a jacuzzi. So instantly for me, the premise is just fun and clever right from the start. And then just with all of the one-liners yelling like you're blocking the bubble jets and (laughs) roping off half of the pool for lap swimming and swimming oh my gosh i this is one that just in the mouth to mouth like just when you think it can't get any crazier it does and i really appreciate sketches that start with a smart premise and then just add in the perfect amount of one-liners and jokes that really land and for me that was this one so this this one is probably actually top top of the night for me. Attention swimmer! Attention swimmer! You are too far! Return immediately! Talking to me? Slide back to the wall! You are blocking the bubble jets! Repeat! You are blocking okay. the bubble jets! All right, fine. It's over here good? <laughs> Watch that undertow, sir! It'll pull you right out! Heads up! It's definitely up there for me, too. It's probably in the top two, for sure. I remember this being a really well-loved sketch. I think I remember watching it at home, like I said, with other people, and it was just the, the reactions that people had, especially when it escalated to... 
Jim Carrey giving Will Ferrell mouth to mouth. Like yes. that got quite the reaction when we were watching. It was interesting to see Will Ferrell play the straight man yes, to Carrie's yes. lifeguard <laughs> character too. Yeah, it was so fun because I could totally see like in another episode Will in that Jim Carrey role mm-hmm. and like being the ridiculous kind of person. So I love the kind of role reversal. It, it kept the audience a little bit on our toes of like, okay, what role is Jim going to be in? Where are we going to put the cast? And it it just landed for me. Yeah, and it feels so lived in to this mm-hmm. character and that's Jim Carrey's sketch background. You yeah. don't always see hosts come in with character work like this. This is a special thing for a host yep. to come in and do. Yeah, no, I think that's when we're talking about Jim Carrey here in the context of Hall of Fame contention. That's something that I look for in the types of hosts that I would bring to the table for consideration is being willing to take on a variety of different roles throughout the night, including some of these just wild characters this was awesome uh the next one uh, i'll see you in hell uh a little bit of a thin premise uh yeah. but so the idea here is that jim carrey played a character in an office he told daryl hammond's character i'll see you in hell and he was like applauded for it by the office so throughout the sketch he kept saying it to to everybody in the sketch and it started losing all meaning hello no You must have the wrong number. That's okay. I'll see you in hell. Oh, uh, here's that computer disc that you needed. Thanks a lot, Jill. See you in hell. (laughs) Joe, this is Mr. Henry. Hey. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Henry. Hi. I'll see you in hell. (laughs) I'm sorry. Uh, Nothing, nothing. I I believe you have a payment for Mr. Henry. To me, this was an example of, like like I said, a thin premise, but just Jim Carrey's presence on camera, to me, like, still made this work. Yep, I agree. Yeah, I feel like this was, this is generally, like, the point of the episode where I'm like, okay, like, we're, not every sketch is gonna hit. This one, to me, was still very solid. Like, in any Mm -hmm. other show, it might have been, like, top of my list. For me, it's maybe middle of the pack this episode, but such a fun moment for Jim Carrey overall and just kind of the continual yelling of the line and I mean Jim Carrey of all people is great at kind of those line delivery moments Mm -hmm. and just making something as many times as you hear it still sound fun and fresh and so yeah I thought I thought it was a fun the kind of shift when he starts kind of using the phrase at all times like writing it on the check there (laughs) um so yeah this was um this was another just solid Solid continuation for me of of the night. Yeah, and if this is like the bottom of the barrel, you're right yeah. for an episode. <laughs> yep. That's yep. like a classic that's episode. Saying something, right? Right. Yeah, because we're yeah. we're both obviously huge SNL fans, and we could admit like most SNL episodes have really uh, bad sketches, a couple bad sketches. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's just yep. the nature of the beast. So if this is, but if this is the worst, it's a heck of an episode. <laughs> exactly. Yep. No, I think at this point it's like, okay. We're we're seeing a really consistent episode mm-hmm. here. Like it it sets that tone really well. The next one was actually one that got a big pop from viewers as well. The Joe Pesci show. Yep. That got a huge pop from people. Jim Carrey came on the Joe Pesci show. Joe Pesci was always played by Jim Brewer. Jim Carrey came on doing a Jimmy Stewart impression, <laughs> which was which is really great. His uh, curmudgeonly take on, on Jimmy Stewart is fantastic. <laughs> Mr. Stewart, welcome to my show. Nice to see you, Johnny. (laughs) Now, Jimmy, you may be 88, but as they say, you're only as old as you feel, huh? Well, when I probably died six years ago. (laughs) Something that we see every now and then on SNL, Mark McKinney comes on as Jim Carrey, so doing an impression of the person in front of the person uh, when that happens, Jamie, like, what what do you think of that as a viewer? I really enjoy it, right? Maybe I'm just easy to please, but I think <laughs> it's a fun, like, melding of the world. Like, I'll I'll take that pretty much any day. Like, I'm like I said, I'm easy to please. You throw that into an episode, yeah. and if, as long as it's not like overused, and it's just like becomes a point where you're like enough of this but no i i had no problem with it in in this moment i thought it was a fun a fun addition to the sketch yeah i agree i i prefer something like that over 
like a walk on that, mm-hmm. that you know like uh mark Wahlberg coming on when andy samberg is doing an impression of him or jennifer yeah. aniston and vanessa bear like you know mm-hmm. like that could be okay but i prefer something like this where jim carrey was roasting himself while playing yeah. jimmy stewart and yes. i found that turn really funny how are you mr stewart still breathing are you <laughs> Who is this clown? Say, let me introduce myself. Hi there, excuse me. I'm Jim Carrey. Pleased to meet you. Smoke a lot of dope, do you, son? That's a rhetorical question. Oh, we hee <laughs> This fellow mugs so much, you should put a handle on the side of his head. <laughs> hey, now, Jim. Yeah, I think that was really the best part of the the sketch for me. So, like, the Jim Carrey as Jimmy Stewart, as Jim Carrey, just, like, multiple <laughs> levels of meta on here. Um, yeah, I thought that was a great kind of high note of the sketch. He has a sense of humor about himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I guess if if I was making $20 million per movie, I'd probably have right? a sense of humor about myself, too. <laughs> yeah, he's on the top on top of the world right now. He's living yes. his best life. Exactly. And, and we should, like, that bears repeating that he is the star in Hollywood right now. Mm-hmm. So he's yep. on top of the world. Uh, exactly. Uh, so to round out the episode, like, kind of light on sketches, but, like, I think the batting average is wonderful because <laughs> the last sketch was Jimmy Tango's Fat Busters, which again, like really just manic energy uh, at this. To me, it was amazing, Jamie, that Jim had this much energy and we're at the end of the show, it's at the end unreal. of the night. unreal. I feel like they were not afraid to just put him into big character role after big character role. And I think that ties in, you were talking earlier about like the anticipation, like, I love that this is an episode where, like, you have people talking, there's the significance of him coming on as the host, and then actually delivering on that by putting him mm-hmm. into these epic roles, but also somehow making it so that he's not overshadowing. Like, I come from this episode, and I'm also like, oh, Will Ferrell is great. It's not like just the Jim Carrey show. It's Jim Carrey doing amazing character work, but also fitting in and giving us some of the great SNL, some classic sketches, some new sketches. It's a nice, a nice mix that fit really well with, I think, the tone of that particular season. And yeah, this Fat Buster sketch, it just became, I just had unhinged energy, which I think was like the, the perfect topper to a wonderful episode. Like we saw the cheerleaders, Roxbury guys, Jacuzzi Lifeguard, I'll See You in Hell, Joe Pesci Show, and Jimmy Tango's yep. Fat Busters. That's like a... That's a, that's a Hall of Fame episode right there, Absolutely, honestly. right? Like, it was just kind of this chaotic, insane energy in the best possible way, like, as the highest compliment possible. And I think one of the things that I think worked really well about this episode overall is I feel like Jim Carrey's style of comedy played really well into the style of comedy that we were starting to see emerge on this show. Like mm-hmm. I'll mention Will Ferrell as maybe the most prolific example, although I think there are many others that like fit that similar mold. Of Sherry just O'Terry kind of... remind me a lot of Jim Carrey. Yes. As far as, like energy goes. Yeah, totally. It's mm-hmm. just this like zaniness, the sometimes over the top, but in a really fun, just make people laugh kind of way that um that i think is what really takes this particular episode to the next level man you're a tv historian like this was the topper to an important season in snl like season 21 like this basically snl was announcing that they're they weren't going anywhere so to speak Mm -hmm. you know season 21 was really important to the show absolutely and i love like that this was the finale too. Like I think it really is like quintessential, like cherry on top of being like, hey, we have this mostly new cast. We have this new kind of vibe of the show, kind of a shift in the style of comedy, arguably that we're starting to see this season. And then showing that the show could book the best of the best that could kind of combine and be that kind of water cooler moment yet again. It just, it was a great 
confusion, I think, of mm-hmm. a cast and a host to to make it clear that SNL was still the show. And Jim Carrey, he was almost an SNL cast member, I believe, in yes. the mid eighty late eighties or so. He auditioned. Uh, Jamie, can you imagine if Jim Carrey was an actual SNL cast oh member? Because to me, yeah. he slid right in right here. Absolutely. It, it could work. Yeah, I, I went back and watched a couple of the audition videos just because I was curious, kind of having read about um, a few of the, the failed auditions. My name is Jim Carrey, and uh, this is my Saturday Night Live audition. Yeah. You want me to pick strawberries? I'm not sure I know how to pick strawberries. It's very simple, Norman. You just bend over and pick them. I hope you're ready to massage my bed back tonight. He's great. I mean, I think it just goes to show. I mean, there's so much talent that I'm sure folks are looking at kind of making these decisions. Like there could absolutely be a world where Jim Carrey is on SNL and is wildly successful through it. And Mm -hmm. I think through various turns in history, we got not that path, but a path where he's coming on as a fantastic host. And and that's a great path too. But I, I think his, his talent certainly would have put him in a place where he would have not been out of place on a show like SNL. I agree. He could have been the the star. I mean, he would have yep. gone into an era with Dana Carvey and Phil Hartman. Yeah. He would have excelled in in a, yeah. in a stacked era. That's how good he is to me. Yep, agreed, agreed. Yeah, it would have been it would have been really cool to watch, right? Like as mm-hmm. as much as I am happy with how history kind of played out and that we got to have an awesome episode with him hosting it. It would have been kind of cool to see an alternate history timeline kind of thing of at least a few episodes of what it would have been like Jim Carrey in in that era oh yeah that would have been fun uh we don't see jim carrey as a host for another 15 years so (laughs) quite quite the long time and he was doing stuff like he had it wasn't just the cable guy and then he fell off the face of the earth he was doing a lot of the truman show sticks out to me you mentioned eternal sunshine of the spotless mind liar liar uh yeah just a handful of stuff that he did jamie 15 years though like it would have been nice to catch a jim carrey appearance (laughs) before that right yeah no i i definitely wouldn't have been sad to see something in that in that time period yeah i'm curious if like if it was ever in consideration or if it mm-hmm. just i mean i'm sure he's a, a busy guy and, and the thing too is you're in all of these movie roles and whatnot it maybe just wasn't the right time but I'm, yeah i'm really glad we got him back for for appearance number two that was january 8th 2011 season 36 so jamie what is a sketch that stood out to you in this episode? Yeah. So I think from this episode, um, one that stood out to me, the black swan one, (laughs) I appreciated this one because it's really a showcase. I felt like for the physical comedy again. So if I'm looking across a Jim Carrey episode, I want to see physical comedy. So he's like flashing his nipples, just like running around the stage in a tutu, (laughs) just like playing off the rest of the cast. Um, so I I like that this one I feel like was another example of starting an episode off with um, high energy and like reminding people because at this point like some of these people may or may not have seen his original SNL episode so reminding people like okay this is what you're gonna get with a Jim Carrey episode he is here to bring the energy. This was a great start. Uh, I I never saw Black Swan so, so was this supposed to be a take from the like from the movie? Was this supposed I, to be like a parody you from know the what? movie? I never saw it either there were bits and pieces that i'm pretty sure were a direct parody like mm-hmm. there was a, a visualization at the end so i'm I'm pretty sure that there was a connection there but there may have been references that i would not have fully gotten either yeah. <laughs> so like specific- he was just so fun to watch though yeah like i never right? saw the movie and if there were a bunch of references i may have missed it but he was so Same. fun to watch and it reminded me he did a character on in living color uh named vera de milo and this is kind of what it reminded me of a little bit <laughs> Yes, that is one of the the few sketches I have seen okay. actually. Yes, that's that energy. I can totally see that that parallel. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, so this was a this was a really excellent start to a second hosting gig. Jamie, one that really really stood out to me was that Maryville trolley ride yeah. sketch. 
Yeah. <laughs> I've always liked these, but Jim, Jim was is just so good. He and Bill Hader and Taryn Killam are so good yep. at these animatronic movements. It amazes oh my me. Gosh. Yeah, this is just pure like you can like this sketch or not like this sketch, but you have to be impressed by how accurately they capture that essence of an animatronic, right? Like mm-hmm. it is just they need to use this video, I feel like, to teach people, I don't know, when you would ever learn the skill of Like in a movement kind of class stuff. or something. Yes, it's just, it, I literally, like, in rewatching this sketch, I was just wanting to pause and, like, study every moment. It was just super, super impressive. And I think the, the sketch overall is really fun. They kind of nail that really creepy ride puppet, repetitive song, <laughs> it's a small world, whatever is inspired by this, that, that whole vibe. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good pick. I always felt like these trolley ride sketches were a way for Bill Hader and Taron Killam to kind of show off. <laughs> yeah. Because they were both really good at this. And Jim Carrey was the perfect host. So you know when he was announced for a host, I bet Taryn and Bill were like, "Oh, we, he's he would he would be so great in this trolley yeah. ride sketch. We got to get him to do it." Oh gosh, with Jim's like expressive face, the way he always moves his body on screen, even in his movies, like yeah. so this sketch is just perfect for him. Perfect. Yeah, no, this is a good one. Yeah, the other one from that episode. So I think the the Maryville trolley ride was the other like big one for me as well. I will also maybe give a little bit of a shout out to the psychic medium yes. one. Um, that to me was fun just because a you get Jim Carrey being able to just do this whole series of impressions, which I am never going to complain about. That the Alan Thicke impression, <laughs> like that, is just top tier for me like i i think that's one that maybe people were all necessarily expecting i mean you get the you got kermit miss piggy impressions going uh-huh. around jimmy stewart like some some things that are maybe not so wild but yeah the alan thick one is is a moment for sure <laughs> michael seaver if i find out you've been cutting class you can kiss that new mustang goodbye That was so good. Well, Jason Sudeikis, his character in the sketch, loved the Alan Thicke right? one too. And he with was him. like, yep. "Yeah, that was great." No one does a thick like exactly. Yes, I was. I feel like he just took the words right out of my mouth. And yeah. that, that that was perfect. No kidding. I, I think the premise of this was solid too. So it was a, a basically a former celebrity impressionist turned psychic, and Jason Sudeikis and Nassim Pedrad came in as a couple who who were trying to get what well, Nassim was trying to get answers from a psychic and Jason was just kind of along for the ride. So the way they set it up is great. Like he introduced himself as a celebrity impressionist. So you kind of knew they were going to use impressions throughout, mm, yeah. throughout the sketch. And it was just like Jimmy Stewart, Billy Holiday, Alan Thicke, Kermit, Charles Bronson. Like it was just uh Sammy Davis Jr. Oh gosh, this was so good. Vanessa Bear asked him, uh, she, she kind of plays along and she's like, uh, yeah, can you get a hold of my, uh, ancestor marlon brando and he's like i don't do marlon i don't have a good brando down <laughs> that was so perfect yeah love that so uh, yeah i think uh the, those kind of uh, were tops on my list for sure that psychic medium one was really good the monologue too i think uh, it was kind of fun to see him like play with the audience uh yeah. I, I don't i didn't recognize i don't think they were writers the, the audience members i'm like who are those i always try to place when audience members get involved in the fun i'm like is, right. which writer is that but i didn't recognize him but it's just kind of fun to see him play with the audience a little bit yeah agreed yeah he's kind of like like kicking us off it's a new year first i think episode since the, the new year started for this one and just like setting the tone again high energy playing playing off the mm. audience a bit so yeah no, it was a fun yeah, I think a successful episode. And even when sketches don't quite work, Jim's just fun to watch on right? screen. Yep. <laughs> and I think that's that's what sets him apart for me, right? It's like there's – you can talk about pretty much any host across SNL. There's no one I can think of where it's like 100% sketch success rate right, across every episode they hosted if you're right. talking about someone who's done these multi, uh, multi-episode multi gigs. But with, I think, an, a Hall of Fame caliber host like Jim Carrey – He's coming in and he's elevating things. He is bringing high energy, wacky characters in 
where you look to him and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad Jim Carrey is here hosting this episode, bringing this persona into the mix. So yeah. that that for me was my takeaway of this episode. Yeah, at the very least, it's going to be fun. And uh, I was, I'm happy because we didn't have to wait as long <laughs> yeah. for, for another yep. Jim Carrey. We'd still be waiting because <laughs> it's been <laughs> less than 15 years since that one. So the next one he hosted was season 40. So only like four seasons later, uh, the Halloween episode uh, in October of 2014. To me, Jamie, I think this was actually a step up from the previous mm-hmm. one. I think I, I like yep. this a little better. It was a really, really consistent uh, episode so like yep. what what immediately stood out to you yeah so i first of all i love halloween so halloween episode mm. i'm all already in a good mood from the start right and you have jim kind of coming out the monologue in his elvis or helvis kind of devil take <laughs> on elvis kind of singing about pecan pie just a little bit wild but i'll take it i i like it it was a fun uh Fun start. That song made me hungry. Yeah, I mean, for this episode, there's a few sketches, I think. Maybe I'll start with Carrie Family Reunion. Like, we were yeah. talking a little bit earlier about impressions and things yeah. being meta. I know we've had a few different, like, family reunion style sketches on Well, you SNL. were my person for Christopher Walken, so we right? saw a Walken yes. family reunion. Yes, we talked that yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you, I think... You like these family reunion sketches? I do I do and mm-hmm. maybe this talks to the earlier point of like oh, I okay. am easy to please with this kind of stuff <laughs> generally it's it's fun it's maybe a little bit how do I put it like giving the audience what they want and so I like that this was at the start of the episode right of just like okay we have Jim Carrey as host we're gonna play into some things we have like Vanessa doing like butt cheek talking like it, <laughs> any Jim Carrey line like just giving us a Jim Carrey Jim Carrey sketch basically so yeah I mean we have impressions spanning the whole gamut it, it was really fun yeah when you have a host like this who just begs to be impersonated mm-hmm. I, I mean it's a natural fit Taryn is probably the most he's probably the best Jim Carrey For sure. I would say yeah. Kyle's was surpri- surprising to me Kyle Mooney did a, a surprisingly good uh, yeah. one to yep. me I like it a lot <laughs> Sound familiar? But seriously, I am super into skateboarding. I grind rails, I do ollies. I've been known to tear up a half pipe because I'm not a lehu zaher. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> All righty then! Yeah, I feel like Taryn's was, was pretty terrific. Like, I feel like that was an impression where you're actually like, oh, like people might talk about this. <laughs> like, this is, this is legit. Oh, 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 oh. Right, he's there. <laughs> you remember when I came up with that? <laughs> I thought I came up with that. <laughs> Agree to disagree. <laughs> well, in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And I mean, the impression quality kind of spans the gamut. So you have some that are, are clearly as just always. for fun, as always, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, actually, I really enjoyed the Jeff Daniels cameo on this one. I'm, yes. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I thought that was a really fun way to wrap it up. And just the two of them, I will take them on my screen any day. That's, that's a fun combo. Oh, God. Yeah, that was so fun. And another In Living Color reference, because Cecily came out as Fire Marshal Bill. Uh, is Aunt Kay here? Absolutely. She just got out of jail for arson. And let me tell you something. I'm still pretty fired up about it. So if you go rewatch that, that's who Cecily's playing. So that Fire Marshal Bill character was really popular that Jim did. So Cecily is paying homage to that. Love it. Oh my gosh. I need to go back and, and 
and watch that. The yes. original source material. Yes, yes. I love yeah, it. Do yourself a favor. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> And Jamie, something that I think SNL should do more of, I lo always love when they do like runners, like three part runners throughout the episode. Yes. Yes. So this, these Lincoln ads with uh, when Jim Carrey was playing Matthew McConaughey just tickled me so much. So we good, saw the escalation right? yep. throughout. Yep. I feel like these, like if I was to show this episode to just like a random sampling of people, I feel like these would be top of the list of things people would want to talk about mm -hmm. right of things where people are like that was really well done that was hilarious so yeah i thought these were a great parody of the lincoln ads i mean you've seen i've seen a few different like parodies or references to these i feel like they were kind of a little bit larger than life in their ridiculousness at the time i love the format where it just gets increasingly zany as things go on yeah. so i think you're right that i think this is kind of an underutilized format of like keep it short, keep it sweet, but the three across the episode um, and the situation just keeps escalating in this one. We have like his kids calling him out or like, dad, you're going five miles an hour and asking like, whose kids are these? <laughs> like it yeah. just, it gets to the point where you get that like just super wacky payoff, which is really fun. We're basically following Matthew McConaughey played by Jim Carrey through an existential crisis. Because, yeah, like the first one, McConaughey's talking about why he's even doing a Lincoln ad. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sometimes you got to go back to actually move forward. And I don't mean go back and reminisce or chase ghosts. I mean, take a big step back. Like go from winning an Oscar to doing a car commercial. <laughs> My agent was like, I could understand if you did this right after the Lincoln lawyer. That would have made sense. And then it's like, you're right. He's driving slowly in the second one. We can see him spiraling down like a more nihilistic mindset with what he's talking about. He doesn't recognize the kids that are supposed to be his kids in the back seat. Yep. Uh, that was great. And then in part three, Keenan plays Dennis Haysbert doing an Allstate commercial. Mm -hmm. And McConaughey runs him over while meditating while, uh, and driving. Yeah. It's <laughs> so it's just, just a like perfect, perfect escalation. Okay. Yeah, no, a really good, really good series of spots. So uh, we have Carrie family reunion, which is something that I highlighted that, highlighted that was a perfect thing to bring up. These The three-part running uh, Lincoln ads, definitely great. Uh, is there anything else from this episode, Jamie, that you wanted to highlight? Yeah, so I mean, I think my favorite sketch slash moment of the night had to be the chandelier sketch. So this is where we have kind of the dance off. We have Kate McKinnon's costume, basically like playing the girl from Sia's Chandelier music video. And then you have Jim Carrey coming out dressed in the exact same costume as part of kind of this Halloween costume contest. And this just gets super meta, right? So the two of them are dancing, going off into the audience at one point. They start running around Lorne. They're in sets from previous sketches. I love that, the scene, the sets from previous sketches. Amazing. I love that. Yes, this is just such good commitment. <laughs> like, yes. the combination of these two, just brilliant. I could watch this one over and over. The crowd is going nuts on this one. And just like, that energy you can feel of people like this is an amazing just physical wild moment it really takes on a life of its own and that's what i mean like jim carrey is the type that makes something an event he could go on a different sketch show or something and and, and be great but jim carrey combined with snl that's an event and he's up for it he's up making for making it something memorable and something yeah. that feels live and energetic. And this, this sketch with Kate is a yeah. perfect example. Like this is probably, I would say maybe the most memorable thing that happened that night Great. that people probably still, still uh, think about to this day. Uh, this is just like, this encapsulates just everything that Jim can bring to SNL. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, not not every host can kind of pull this type of sketch off with just the seamless interplay. I feel like you have to really 
trust the host to be somebody who can make all of these parts come together and just he he absolutely is that type of host yeah you're basically like you have an extra cast member yeah. when Jim Carrey hosts for sure for sure there was also one it's called Secret Billionaire that, that I mm-hmm. that I kind of highlighted too. So Jim played an old billionaire named Abbott, and they were on a show called Secret Billionaire. Cecily yes. uh, had to guess who the billionaire was, and just the stories, like Jim in Gosh. character telling these oddball stories, I'll always love it. In 1978, I rigged an election in Panama, <laughs> as I had high stakes in a banana futures. Things got messy, and the bastards made off with a souvenir, my left ham. But fortunately, I replaced it with one of my own creations. <laughs> this mechanatronic hand, strong enough to crush steel, but soft enough for manual pleasure. Yeah, I feel like this one... He's just this, like, bizarre old guy, possible member of the Illuminati. Just everything he says is increasingly zany. Yeah, this was one for me that, like, if you take Jim Carrey and Jim... If you take Jim Carrey out of this sketch, it doesn't work as well for me. Like, Mm -hmm. I think you need Jim Carrey to make this sketch solid. Um, And so having that, that character and particularly having his portrayal of that character to make it so funny was crucial yeah you need somebody with real sketch comedy chops to be able to sell a bizarre story like my i love when he told that story about uh, the dennis and brian story okay final question guys i love the holidays what do you do to feel jolly i was alone and bored one christmas so i rented out an airplane hanger and filled it with 250 men named dennis (laughs) and one named brian i watched from two-way glass above just to see what they would do (laughs) would the dennises even know Soon they started introducing themselves. I'm Dennis. I'm Dennis. I'm Dennis. I'm Dennis. And I watched Brian very carefully. (laughs) Would he be frightened and disoriented? Fully immersed in a world out of his control? A world of Dennis's? Or would he become a sort of unofficial leader? I just feel like so that bizarre. Was the perfect, yeah, perfect epitome of this sketch and just like wild and like however bizarre the last story was, we're going to make it more bizarre <laughs> for this next yeah. story. Yeah, you had to go from rigging an election in Panama because he had like some futures in some, I forgot what it was. But he, so he his character rigged an election in Panama and then you have to go more bizarre with the Dennis and Brian story. Ah, it was just wonderful. This is like a yeah. really great encapsulation of Jim. And as a Halloween person yourself, they ended the episode with something really like demonic and strange. That uh, Halloween Emporium one where is the Halloween store owner who was possessed by a demon, but he still yeah. wanted to run the store. <laughs> yes, this one was fun too to me. Like I, I thought it was a good like ending one. Like it mm-hmm. keeps the Halloween energy going a little bit allows Jim Carrey to play one last kind of wacky role. I loved like the listing of the different Halloween costumes out was great. I thought this was was a solid way to to end the episode by like reminding us like okay, Jim Carrey, he's not done doing great stuff yet. We're going to throw him into one one last great role. Yeah, just a really really fun episode. So to me, it wasn't just cuz that first episode was classic, but it wasn't just that first episode. Like this yep. to me holds up it as a great episode in and of itself. I like rewatching it, I enjoyed it more than I even remembered. Yeah. Like it was so yep. good. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, I feel like there's the mix of like moments like the chandelier bit that we were talking about earlier, but also just across across the episode, right? Like there's mm-hmm. just a really fun mix of sketches here. I feel like there's a little bit of something for everyone between the like more on the nose stuff, the little bit wackier, like billionaire reality show character, like that kind of stuff, like just a whole a whole mix across this episode. Yeah, it was great. And we haven't seen him host since. So this mm-hmm. was 2014. It's been 
nine years now, a little over nine years since he's hosted. But he did come back, Jamie, and played uh, a really important role during uh, the last presidential election cycle. He played Joe Biden. So what did you make of Jim coming back and playing Joe Biden? So amazing. Like, (laughs) just honestly... Top, top tier Joe Biden impression, in my opinion. Like, it was just such a a wacky time in terms of, like, the whole, like, debate storylines on and SNL and some of those sketches. And he fit into that mix so well. Like, with Alec Baldwin's Trump and then Biden coming in by Jim Carrey. Like, it was such a great interplay where you have, like, two amazing impressions like some of the debate um debate ones they did just great i thought it it was a top tier mm-hmm. impression like and people were talking about it and he he has the chops to pull pull it off he's a great impressionist like he yeah. really is look man i'm a nice guy but if you give me any more guff tonight i'll rip your face off like a mad chimp <laughs> i'll knock that thing off your head and burn it Bury it in the pet cemetery where it came from. <laughs> Stop it, Joe. Stop it. God, you can't lose your cool just because this joker's raising little monkey dust. The country's counting on you. to just stand here and look lucid. Yeah, yeah. This was great. Like, this Jimmy Stewart is top notch and good yeah yeah. and this biden was good then they were kind of snl was in limbo with who's gonna play joe biden jason sudeikis was busy with ted lasso i don't know if he had any even interest in coming back to do it regularly woody harrelson they had come uh, and i think he did a pretty respectable job but by uh, but jim carrey just added that energy and that whack the wacky old guy take on it (laughs) so so good like I feel like the there's a moment from one of the one of the sketches where he's like playing Biden, trying to not get frustrated with himself during one of the debates, and like that balance of like Joe, but like trying to pull himself back in the in the presence of Trump. It was just a great um, great attention to detail as well. I feel like this. Um, this is one where I remember a lot of people talking about this impression, right? Mm-hmm. Being like, this was a fantastic. Joe Biden impression. And you knew when uh, the when they were doing that show that night that Biden was announced as have, having beat Trump in the election. You knew that he had to come out with the Ace Ventura line. Yeah. We need to go forward together. Unfortunately, there are situations in life, and this is one of them, where there must be a winner and hey, user. <laughs> Of course, he had Perfect. to say that, right? Yep, yep. No, I think, like, <laughs> it's interesting, right? Like, we talk about different people as hosts and kind of separating potentially from some of the, like, cameos or other impressions or whatnot. But it ties into his story, right? So, like, we can separate it, but it's also sometimes hard to separate it because mm-hmm. he just – it plays into this story of, like, Jim Carrey as having kind of tied himself into the show's history and created such a track record of, like – he is a guy who can come on this show and will deliver the goods, and and we know that. So, as much as I like sometimes try to separate it, I feel like it's it's hard for a situation like this because it is a little bit part of his story. I think we've done a really good job of breaking down Jim's hosting stints and what he's done for SNL, but just like the Cliff's Notes version, why should people consider casting a vote for Jim Carrey for the SNL Hall of Fame? My pitch to you all is this. So I think when I think about Hall of Fame caliber hosts, I look at consistency across multiple eras. Jim Carrey absolutely has that. So spanning from 96 to 2014 in terms of official hosting gigs. I think the fact that he hosted arguably one of the show's most iconic episodes. I have seen this episode in discussion for like 
top of all time status that I know there are so many great episodes, but the fact that this is even in that conversation, I think is a big um, push in his favor as well. I'd also argue it was really an important episode in terms of cementing the show's excellence in that era, really kind of proving that SNL was back on top. So I feel like he has that historical momentum aspect of his history on the show. So yeah, really, I think for for Hall of Fame candidacy, someone with that consistent greatness, that ability from a humor standpoint to elevate things and to bring kind of that zany sketch comedy talent. And he really did that. And he he left his stamp on SNL across a wide span of time and and just made it better by being on it. So I, I really think he is a strong contender in terms of one of the greatest hosts across the show's history. So there's that. Thank you so much, Thomas and Jamie. That was fantastic. Uh, a detailed look inside of the SNL career of Jim Carrey. You couple that together with the information you get from Matt in the Minutia Minute, and you've got a real strong sense of who this individual is and what he means to SNL. Is it enough to get your vote? We shall see. Voting, of course, opens on Tuesday the 5th of December. And it will run straight through to the 17th of December. Sunday the 17th at midnight will be your last chance to cast votes. I will be sending out ballots to everybody who has registered in the past. Uh, However, we'll also be sharing the link uh, for voting as well. And you can get access to that from our socials. Please follow uh, follow us on our socials. We've been negligent with uh keeping up to date with our our socials but uh maybe for season five we'll we'll work much harder at that um let's go to the sketch now this is uh, a sketch called psychic medium it comes from season 36 january of 2011 it stars carrie sudeikis nasim patrad and vanessa bayer and Jim plays a celebrity, a celebrity impressionist turned psychic medium. Uh, it's it's just a funny Carrie led sketch that gives him a chance to do multiple impressions, and I think that that's a great deal of fun. And when we talk about Jim Carrey, that's what we want to see. We want to see those impressions. We want to see him morph his face and become somebody that uh, he is not necessarily, and suspend our disbelief. So let's go to that now. This is the sketch. I can't believe we're actually doing this, paying money to some psychic. Honey, you said you'd keep an open mind. I'm trying to contact my uncle. How about you? My father. He passed away last spring, and I just wish I could speak to him one last time. That can be arranged. <laughs> Pardon me, my lateness. I was in the bathroom. I didn't hear a flush. Let's begin. <laughs> I am Alessandra. You've all lost loved ones, but I commune with the dead and channel their spirits. Wait a sec. Do I know you from somewhere? <laughs> well, in the early 80s, I was prominent celebrity impressionist Alan Munch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, honey, you remember this guy was on Comic Relief like three times. Four times. Four times. Yes, but those days are behind me. Oh, well, it's good you're not a comedian anymore because we're really looking for answers today. You do not worry. I am a psychic medium. And I take these grief seances very seriously. Take my hand. I didn't hear a sink either. <laughs> take my hand. <laughs> There is a spirit here. There is a spirit in this room. A man. I can see his face. Is it my father? No. It's... It's... 
Show yourself, spirit. It's none other than Mr. Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> that lady up on top of the Capitol Dome. <laughs> Doggone it. That, that lady stands for liberty. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, that sounded just like Jimmy Stewart. Thank you. He was the spirit that was here. Yeah. Why would Jimmy Stewart want to contact us? I cannot answer that question. I'm just a humble medium. A vessel through which they speak. Well, can we try to contact my father? Yes. Take my hand. Oh, well. Ah, that really <laughs> itches. Take my hand. I see a spirit. Is it my father? No. Unless your father was the great Billy Holiday. No way. No way. <laughs> Nobody's business if I do. <laughs> oh, 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 man. I just I really wanted to speak to my father. <sighs> I see someone's father. What does he have to say? He wants to talk about growing pains. What? Because he's TV's favorite father, Alan Vick. <laughs> Michael Seaver, if I find out you've been cutting class, you can kiss that new Mustang goodbye. What? Too soon? No, I'm pretty sure Alan Thicke is still alive. Like, 60% sure. That was great! No one does a thick. <laughs> Do more spirits! Miss Piggy's with us. No, is she? The fictional puppet, Miss Piggy? Oh, Kimmy! You are my favorite! <laughs> wait, 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 is Kermit here, too? I'm afraid so. <laughs> it's not easy. Being green. Stop doing your act. How dare you! I can't control the spirits. Yeah. Just like you can't control Mr. Charles Bronson. <laughs> hey, scumbag. <laughs> you make me wanna puke. Okay. Awesome. I'm awesome. leaving. What? I'm leaving. Honey, we're gonna miss this closer. <sighs> you were amazing. Oh, are you? Can we try to contact my uncle? You might have heard of him. He was the actor Marlon Brando. Don't do Marlon. <laughs> Don't have a good Brando down. Uh, well, can you do a Sammy Davis Jr.? Well, let's just see if he's here. <sighs> <laughs> That's where I left that thing. <laughs> Who can take an eyeball, <laughs> dip it in a dream? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. What a great sketch. Uh, if that doesn't seal the deal for you, I don't know what will. Uh, go back and watch the entirety of that episode, maybe. That will convince you. Again, voting opens December the 5th, runs through Sunday the 17th. You can get the link from all our socials. If you've already registered, I have your email address and I will send you a, a link to the ballot via email. And uh, then it's just up to you to make your picks. And uh, we'll go from there. We'll do the heavy lifting. We'll do the tabulating. And we will make an announcement on December 18th, a very special episode, the last episode of the season, episode 19. We will reveal the class of season four. So that's pretty doggone exciting. And uh, I hope you're here for it and you're ready to cast your ballot. Now, that's what I have for you. So if you would do me a favor and on your way out, as you pass the weekend update exhibit, turn out the lights because the SNL Hall of Fame is now closed. 
Thanks for listening to the SNL Hall of Fame podcast. Make sure to rate, review, share, and subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media at SNLHOF. This is Doug Denant saying, this is Doug Denant saying, see you next week.